In this video, we're going to talk about par partial fraction decomposition um, when you have an irreducible quadratic factor. Okay, so um, you know this 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 one x minus two. That one is you know same as in previous videos. Um, but this x squared plus eight, this is something that we can't factor. So that's the irreducible quadratic factor. Okay, so to do this. First, okay, so the a over x minus 2, that's, you know, the same idea as in previous videos. But now how to deal with this one. So to deal with that one, we do plus b, and um, instead of it just being b over x squared plus 8, which is what it would usually be if we um, had, on the bottom we had this, the power, you know, some, some term with, just power one, degree one, right? Which is what this one is. Um, but instead, because that's degree two, what we're gonna have to do is, is b, x, plus c, okay? So that's the way that you deal with um, irreducible quadratic factors. You do this b, x, plus c, instead of just having b. All right, then all the other steps are pretty much the same as in previous examples. Um, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna multiply both sides by x minus two, x squared plus 8. So then you'll have on the on the left hand side the bottom will cancel so your denominator will cancel so you'll have um, 3x squared plus 5x minus 4 and then on the right hand side you'll have a and the x minus 2 will cancel so then you'll just have the x plus 8 and then bx plus c, and the x squared plus 8 will cancel, so then you'll just have the x minus 2. Okay, so now if I plug in x equals 2, plug in x equals 2, I'll be able to solve for a. Okay, because this over here will cancel at 2 minus 2 is 0. So let's go ahead and do that first. We'll plug in um, x equals 2, and so then I'll have 3 times 2 squared, which is 4, plus 5 times 2 minus 4 equals 8 times, oh, that should have been an x squared, okay. Um, so then x squared, which is 4 plus 8, okay. And so this is 12 plus 10 minus 4 equals 8 times 12. So that's 22 minus 4 which is 18 equals 12a, divide both sides by 12. So 18 over 12 equals a, that can be reduced a little bit. Um, let's see, both are divisible by six, so that'll be three halves equals a. Okay, so now next I'm gonna need to set up a system of linear equations in order to be able to solve for b and c. So to do that, I'm going to need to distribute a and um, and I just distribute this one over here. So let's go ahead and do that next. So I'll have 3x squared plus 5x minus 4 equals ax squared. Okay, I'm distributing the a plus 8a. I should write the 8 first. 8a. And then plus, so I'm going to have to FOIL this, okay? So um, I'll have B, BX squared, so, and then plus, um, or minus, minus 2 times BX, and then plus uh, CX, and then minus 2C, okay? So now let's combine like terms. So... What involves x squared? A and b. Okay, so a plus b times x squared. Let's go ahead and cross those ones out. And then what involves x? This one and this one. So plus negative 2b plus c times x. Those ones cancel. And then what else do we have? We have a constants. These two are the class two constants plus 8a minus 2c, okay? All right, and then comparing that to what we see over here on the left-hand side, 3 must equal a plus b. 
5 must equal negative 2b plus c because why, why, why am I saying this? Is because this is x squared, that's x squared. This is x, that's x. This is negative 4, this must be negative 4. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and write that as a system of linear equations. So I'm going to have a plus b equals 3. Negative 2b plus c equals 5. And 8a minus 2c equals negative 4. Okay, so now I have already, already know what a is. So this is my system here. But I already know what a is from up here. So if I plug in a, say I were to plug in a here, then I can find what b is. So let me go ahead and do that. Um, you know, also, you know, I could just use an elimination method to just solve this system, but it's easier to, you know, use information that you already have so you can solve it faster. So a equals 3 halves plus b equals 3, right? I'm using, um, I'm using this equation here and then this information for what a is. So 3 halves plus b equals 3. All right, so if you subtract 3 halves from both sides, you get b equals 3 minus 3 halves. Um, 3 halves is the same as 6 halves, so that's b equals um, 3 halves, right? 6 halves minus 3 halves is 3 halves again. Um, okay, so there's b. So now to find c, I could either use, um, you know, this equation or this equation. It doesn't matter. I'll go ahead and use the second one. This looks a little easier. Um, so I'll have negative 2, and then b is 3 halves plus c equals 5. So now these two cancel, so I have negative 3 plus c equals 5. Add 3 to both sides, c equals 8. Okay, so now just to write my answer, I'll write it up here. Um, so a is... Um, a is 3 halves, so I'll write 3, and then I'll do the 2 on the bottom, so I'll now have x minus 2, and then plus b is 3 halves x plus c, which is 8, over x squared plus 8. Okay, but I can't have that um, fraction on the, on the um, bottom there, or... I can't have that fraction, this fraction here, this 3 halves x, because then I have a fraction over a fraction. So to get rid of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 2. Okay. So then instead of having the 3 halves there, I'm going to have 3. But then the 8 will also become 16. Okay. So the 8 will become 16. And then on the bottom, also, I'll have this, um, I have a 2 on the bottom. All right, so now this is my partial fraction decomposition. Moving on to one last example. Um, so in this example, we have a um, irre irreducible quadratic factor, but it's also being repeated, okay? So it's, this is an irreducible factor happening twice. So... When we write this out, we're going to have to say ax plus c over x squared plus 1, okay? And then because it's happening twice, we need first, we need to write it once, or once, and then we'll write it when it's squared. So, oh, instead of saying b, I should use the letter, then c, I should use b. All right, so a and b, and then cx plus d over x squared plus 1, then square it, okay? So doing this, like where I'm writing it once, and then I'm writing, you know, to second power, this is how the way that you deal with um, factors that are showing up more than once. Um, and then doing this on the top, ax plus b, that's the way you deal with irreducible factors. All right, so now I just need to solve for a, b, c, and d. And um, so let's go ahead and get started with that. The first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by x squared plus 1. Oops. Plus 1. 
squared. So then on the right hand or left hand side, I'll just have x squared plus 3x minus 4. And then one of them will cancel here. So I would have this times x squared plus 1. And then, um, and then I'd have plus c, uh, x, plus d, and then these, um, yeah, this one would have canceled with that one. So I would just have this. Okay, so I have what I see here. Um, first, is there anything that I can plug in for x and, um, and find out one of these variables? No, I don't see anything that I can really plug in, right? If I plug in negative 1, it's not like this cancels and you know, it doesn't help. So the only way I'm going to be able to do this is going to be setting up a system of linear equations and solving. So let's go ahead and start by let's foil this first, these first two. Um, let's foil this. Okay, so then we would have ax times x squared, which is ax cubed, and then ax times 1, so that would be ax, and then b times x squared, so that would be plus bx squared, and then b times 1, which is b. Okay, then that, time, that plus cx plus d. All right, let's combine like terms. So the only thing with a cubed is a, and then uh, the only thing with a squared is b, and then with x I have a and c, so plus a plus c x. And then with um, the without anything, I have B and D. Okay. All right. Um, so comparing that to what I see over here on the left-hand side, we can see that so there's a leading one there. Okay. So um, there's no terms on the left-hand side that have x cubed, right? So a must equal zero. So let's go ahead and write that a equals zero. Then um, moving on to x squared. There's a term on the left-hand side with x squared, and its coefficient is 1. So on the right-hand side, when I have x squared, this b must equal 1. So b equals 1. Then, um, then with an x, I have 3 as the coefficient. So here I have an x, so a plus c must equal 3. a plus c equals 3. And then, um, then I have b plus d, and that's the constant out back, and that's going to be um, negative 4. So b plus d must equal negative 4. Okay, there's my system of linear equations. Um, it's not that bad to solve because I, they already told me that a equals 0 and b equals 1. So uh, what c so a plus c equals 3, and a is 0, so 0 plus, um, 0 plus c equals 3, so c must equal 3, okay, so c equals 3. And then lastly, b plus d equals negative 4, so b is 1, so plus d equals negative 4, so if I subtract 1 from both sides, I get d equals negative 5. Okay, so now I can go ahead and write my answer. So a is 0, so this basically cancels up top here. So then um, b is 1, so 1 over x squared plus 1. And then that plus c, which is 3x, and then plus d, which is negative 5. So instead of saying plus, I should say minus 5 over x squared plus 1 squared. And there you go. That is my partial fraction decomposition.